the need to improvise, continuously improvise meaning for the information that you get, because you're not told nobody's going to interpret anything for you. You have to interpret your own genome, your own physiological states, your own memories. And so I'm really interested in the different ways that this gets amplified in evolution. And of course, you know, brains, you know, the familiar brains are one way that that happens, but there are many other ways that that happens. And I want to uh, just briefly give you two, two quick analogies that uh, I think illustrate some of the aspects of what the field of diverse intelligence is about, at least the way I see it. First of all, think about the electromagnetic spectrum. So back in the day when we didn't have a proper theory of electromagnetism, we had lightning and static electricity and light and magnets and various things like that. And we thought those were all different things. We thought they were all categories, like sharp, crisp categories. Nobody thought that light and magnets were the same. And those are, are you know, we, we had categories for all those things. And also, so that's the first thing, we, we, we thought these were all distinct. And because of our, our, of our own evolutionary uh, history, we were only sensitive to a tiny part of that spectrum. There were huge examples of this phenomenon that we were completely blind to. And then we eventually we ended up with a good theory of electromagnetism. We did two things. First of all, unified. It says, no, these are all actually, in a very meaningful way, they are all examples of the same underlying phenomenon. Okay, so a deep unification. So that's great. And two, they allowed us to make technology, useful technology, that allows us to operate across the spectrum to be able to detect and modulate things that before were completely invisible to us, meaning we didn't think they existed, but now, but now we know better. So something like this is what I think is going to happen for cognition. I think we are sensitive to an extremely narrow spectrum among the gigantic space of possible minds. I think uh, they are all around us, but we are totally mind blind to to most of them. You know, I think I think that's a good term. Mind blindness is, is that we just don't recognize these things because we don't have a good theory that explains why the problem solving in a, of an amoeba, of a thermostat, of an organ, of a human, of a collection of humans doing Wikipedia, whatever, why these are all actually on the same spectrum. We don't have a good theory uh, yet. And, and the second thing is we don't have the technology. And this is something else that um, I think we have a lot to talk about in terms of prosthetics. Okay, cognitive and, and physical bodily prosthetics that would allow us to interact with these other beings that are all around us.